Hello, my beautiful friends, and welcome back to another video. My name is Roshni. I am a life coach. I am so happy to have you here, and this channel is called Betty Grow Up. It's a channel dedicated to taking control of your mental health. If you follow my channel closely, you might know that I didn't post last weekend. I normally post every single Sunday, so be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to get updated on my newest videos. Um, but I was really not feeling well. I literally had like a total mental breakdown and it was pretty bad. So I decided to take the weekend off and I feel so much better. So I wanted to do something special and kind of different for Halloween. But something that I wanted to share with you guys and bring out to my channel was the idea of past lives. So past lives kind of have this like mix between like supernatural and spiritual and I feel like it's very different but it's also kind of scary. It's really scary to think that you've been on earth before, that you had a whole life that you might not even remember, that some things could have happened to you that affect what this current life is and what you're dealing with it today to think about it and theorize about it is fun but when you actually think about like putting yourself under hypnosis or going to see someone to talk to you about your past lives like a palmist or some sort of energy reader um, it really brings it into perspective to think that like you could have issues that were developed in your psyche before you were even born and like I want to get into all of these different things um, in a little bit so the reason that I wanted to bridge something like past lives which like I said is kind of spiritual with the idea of my channel which is life coaching and mental health a lot of people can find a lot of healing when they look into their past lives and they're able to figure out you know some things that happened to them or a source of their trauma or a source of their fears or current phobias when you're able to find that something actually made you afraid of that and that you're not just crazy and you're not just randomly terrified of spiders or clowns or whatever it is there's kind of a reason behind it you understand the fear better and then why doing that help yourself heal and grow from that pain so the first thing that I wanted to talk about is what past lives are and if you see me glancing down I'm just have my notes in front of me Past lives aren't necessarily part of any specific religion you don't have to believe in reincarnation specifically to have to believe in past lives I guess um, or at least you don't have to be like Buddhist or Hindu to believe in past lives. So the idea is basically that you have a spirit mind and then you have your actual body. So some people will call it a spirit mind. I think that the equivalent could also be a soul or something like that, but it's basically like your higher self. Some people also believe that, like on my previous video, I talked about the difference between the self and the ego in terms of psychoanalysis. I'll link that video um, up here as well. But that video talks about how the ego is one part of you and then your higher self is another part of you and some people take that a step further and they actually believe that your higher self is kind of like your soul and your ego is sort of like the body side of you so our bodies have a lot of like natural and immediate needs like eating or going to the bathroom or being dehydrated um, whereas our spirit minds and the spiritual side of us we don't have those kinds of immediate needs time is a little bit more flexible and so that's kind of what leads people to believe that this soul could also be the higher self side of you all of that um, is said because what happens is that it's believed that when we die our bodies physically pass away but when people believe in past lives they often believe that spirit minds move on so it's not like your physical body it's not even necessarily the personality of the person that you were on earth but it's kind of this more core part of you which again could be called your higher self it's like this very core central being of who you are and it's it, it is confusing and con complicated because once you are brought into a life on earth you become a certain person, you take on their name, you take on their family, you take on their culture and their values, their surroundings, all of that becomes who you are. And so many of us, you know, take our identity from those things. You know, we say, I was born and raised in wherever we were born and raised. I grew up in this kind of environment. I'm a baby boomer. I'm a millennial. We identify so much with where we grew up and when. Um, but when you take all of that out, there is still this core person, right? So there's all these added layers of personality and genetics and behavior and all those things that come into play once we enter a life on earth. However, when we pass away and our body dies, those personalities and those parts of ourselves are kind of stripped away so that what we're left with is 
our spirit mind. So the idea is that that goes on, that goes into the other side or onto the afterlife, however you believe in that. And this again doesn't have to be, you don't have to believe in one afterlife to believe in past lives. You don't have to believe that the same thing happens when our souls go, go off to another place. Wherever you believe in, in terms of an afterlife, you could probably apply it to that or think about it within those terms at least. But when you do get to the other side, you you know are reunited with people you might have known from past lives. You're reunited with other souls and maybe your spirit guides. And then what happens is that you review your life and you decide what you want to work on next, the next time that you come to earth. So it's interesting because some people have only been to earth two or three times. Some people have been, you know, living on earth for a really long period of time. And some people also believe that instead of going to hell, you just don't go to the other side. You don't go to this like paradise, but instead you just get born again on um, into another body on earth and you just keep recycling through that until you end up leveling up. So you will hear kind of themes of the idea of like nirvana and meditating and getting to this next spiritual level and honestly the more that I look into it and the more that I apply certain principles into my own life the more that I can see that it is kind of accurate like it does make a lot of sense to think about things that way. Um, I think it's interesting too as I've been making my lessons I've learned series I've noticed that there are so many lessons or so many struggles that keep coming up for me again and again and again and I think it's because that lesson is going to come up until I've mastered how I handle it, even if the situation is slightly different. And I think when we experience things like that in our lives, it kind of is interesting to think about your life revolving around a certain theme of relationship problems or personal issues or financial issues or career issues. Whatever it is, if there's a theme of things that keep happening, you probably whether you believe in this or not, you know, there's a chance that you could have decided that before you even came to this earth that you wanted to have certain struggles because you mastering those struggles and you figuring them out and staying in alignment while getting through those issues will help you basically enter the next spiritual plane. And so a lot of these things tie in tie into past lives, but again, you don't have to believe in every single one of these to want to be interested in past lives or to learn more about your own past lives. So the other thing that I wanted to mention and the reason that is a huge argument for the idea of past lives is that matter cannot be created or destroyed and we know that and energy cannot be created or destroyed. So while our physical bodies might decompose and kind of enter back into this sort of nitrogen cycle type of situation, there is still the energy of our soul. And for a long time, I believe that our soul and our personality and all of that were just kind of different terms that we use to describe our mind, that all of that were neurological processes. And when you passed away, all of those things stopped. So whoever you were, how you came to know yourself, all of that basically ceases once you pass away um, and you're just kind of gone forever. However, the other idea is that because energy can't be destroyed and because this physical body is being destroyed, there has to be some sort of energetic presence that continues on through other lives. So that is basically the kind of scientific explanation or an idea and concept that's used in modern day science that can also defend the idea of past lives. So let's move on and let's start to talk about ways that you can know if you have past lives or if you've been experiencing something that might be a sign that you have past lives. So the following things are all going to be signs and I'm just going to go through them um, in a quick list form. So the first one is having recurring familiar dreams. Um, so you know, you might have the same nightmare over and over. You might have a nightmare that you were stabbed or that you were killed or that you were being chased. Um, you could also have some sort of like weird n dream that isn't necessarily a nightmare. It's not even scary, but it's like a really similar scene. Like you always find yourself in this one castle or in this one garden or in like a barn. I don't know. If you notice any sort of recurring patterns in your dreams, whether that's location or an action that's happening or something that you're doing, it could be a sign that that isn't necessarily a dream, but it's actually a subconscious idea and memory that you have of a past life. Another one could be that you have lots of out of place memories or deja vu. There are lots of case studies online of people that will have memories of like, 
a farm, you know, or going to the well and getting water for the farm, or feeding animals, or something like that. And a lot of that is tied to like a really older agrarian lifestyle that many of us may have lived through. You know, they're currently living in a city or currently living in a suburb, so they're like, I've never even been to a farm, I've never been on a farm, but I keep having like these daydreams or these deja vu moments where I feel like I, you know, used to grow up on a farm or I used to take care of animals on that in that kind of setting. Another um, feeling, and I felt like this a lot, is just feeling old or feeling like you've done things before. Ever since I was a kid, I just knew that I wanted to be an adult, and I know that every kid wants that or every kid wants to be older, but ever since I've become an adult and in all my recent years of growing and becoming older, I have only wanted to keep getting older. I've never wanted to go back to my life. There's so many people that say, you know, your best years are your childhood or your best years are in college. I've never went, wanted that for myself. I've never felt that way. I feel like every year just keeps getting better and I just keep wanting to get, get older. And it, there was almost this constant frustration around me when I was a kid where I was like, I don't want to be a kid. I don't want to play with these dumb toys. Like all of this is just like dumb. Like I, I just wanted to fast forward to being an adult so badly. And I, that's not necessarily what I would say every single person is going to feel like, um, but just the idea that you've like done things before and you know, you, you're kind of used to this. Like you're like, this doesn't surprise me. I'm not fascinated with my surroundings because nothing really seems new. So another one is that you feel out of place on earth. So what that could really mean is that you know, you're kind of like, wow, the way that humans do things is so stupid. We've all probably had thoughts about how society can be ridiculous or how things in society are stupid. Um, but I think it's kind of like this recurring and consistent feeling that you're not from here, that normal customs and traditions, regardless of what culture you're from, don't always make sense to you. You kind of feel like you're an alien on earth. You kind of feel like your head is in the clouds. You find it hard to stay grounded. And these are a lot of um, symptoms that I often have and a lot of symptoms that psychics will have as well. Um, sometimes we're just more connected to a different dimension or a different spiritual plane. And it's a little bit harder things that are going on around us so if you have had that experience as well that could be a huge sign that you've had a past life um, or that you might have some psychic abilities that you could develop the next thing is unexplained fear so this means like really extreme fears and phobias um, I have had a fear of like masked things and clowns since I was a literal baby like when I was an infant my parents would take me to friends birthday parties and I would actually freak out before I could even speak like I would just start crying because I hated things in masks I hated clowns I still am scared of clowns like it's not like a life or death situation anymore but there's something with like people who have masks on or something where you can't fully see someone's facial features that has this like instant like heart attack moment for me and when I finally got my palms read and I found out that I was publicly executed um, a lot of that started to make sense she said that I kind of grew up around medieval times there was lots of like armor there were masks there was a lot more um, like physical corporal punishment type of thing so um, it definitely does make sense that a lot of those fears could play in um, and I also had this really deep underlying fear that I was just a bad person like I just felt bad everything in my life felt like it was confirming that I was a bad person that I wasn't up to any good and this was even before I'd actually ever even done anything wrong this goes back to when I was like a kid and I'd never broken any laws that where you know I, I did my best not to break any rules but I always just had this inherent feeling that I was bad and when I finally went this summer to my palmist um, and I got that palm, I made a video on it. So if you want to check it out, definitely do that. Um, but when she told me that I was publicly executed and that, you know, that obviously would instill this fear of like everyone not trusting me or of me being a bad person. And so it makes sense that from a young age, I felt that way. And the more that I've thought about that and the more time that's gone by, I've meditated on it, I've thought about it and journaled about it. And I keep getting like sort of different flashbacks of different parts of that scene. Um, and there's so many signs, like these are just a couple, but there's way, way more many signs that kind of shows that that was true. I was also really scared to undergo a past life regression because I didn't want to go back 
back to that moment. I didn't want to relive that, um, and I was really afraid. And so having someone tell me through a palm reading rather than me have to go back to that moment was really, really helpful. And it's actually helped with a lot of my chronic neck pains as well. So that's why I think it's really important for you to figure out more about your past life and see if any of the traumas or any of the issues that you're holding on to might actually come from a source in a past life. Um, the next couple are um, having an affinity for certain periods or cultures. You know, any sort of country that you've never been to, if you just love a certain time period, anything like that could mean that you might, might have actually grown up during that time period in a different life and that you also really loved it back then or you had some good memories from that time. Two ways that you can learn about past lives, which I have uh, mentioned, is a past life regression, so that would include hypnosis, or the second would be having a palm reading done. Um, that way you don't have to go under hypnosis, but they can, still can tell you some. It might not always be as accurate, um, but again, it just kind of goes with what you resonate with, so it's a good way to kind of dip your toes in the field of past lives, if you will. Another thing that I need to mention when I talk about past lives is the idea of cell memory. So earlier I talked about how you can have a spirit mind and that can carry on things from past lives, but all of that still sounds confusing. So the way that I mainly learned about past lives is through a book called Past Lives Future Healing. I'm looking over on my bookshelf and that looks right. It's by Sylvia Brown. I'll link it in the description below if you're interested. But this entire book is on different case studies and on different research that she did on past lives um, and through her own hypnosis practice. And she found that cell memory was a huge factor in remembering your past lives. So basically, if something traumatic had happened to you or if something negative has hap had happened to you, then that could cause a really serious trauma like we have pretty much learned for anything that would happen in our current life. Um, but what happens is that when you get past, when you pass on, your spirit mind kind of holds that cell memory so that when you come back to life and you inhabit another human body in your new life on earth, your spirit mind and the cells of that body kind of become one and your cells take on the cell memory of what you've experienced in your past lives. Now, obviously this isn't like a clear cut, factual, matter of fact type of thing. It's almost impossible to be able to even conduct a study that could confirm these kinds of things. Um, it's just so complicated anytime you're dealing with humans, let alone kind of like metaphysical and supernatural and spiritual things. It's just hard to test those types of ideas. But the interesting thing about cell memory is that there have been real results about cell memory. One was that there was a study in 2004 at the Southwestern University Medical Center in Dallas, um, actually nearby where I'm from, and they found that cell memories do actually, in fact, store experiences, um, and they can be a major sign of disease and illness, but something that's interesting is that it can actually connect emotions, disease, and anxiety, as well as toxic patterns that can affect your entire body. So it, there is proof that emotions are held in cells and that, you know, your cells can, can store physical emotions. That is also why I use and talk about EFT, Emotional Freedom Technique, so strongly. And if you want to learn more about it, I have a free training, so I'll link that description as well. But EFT basically talks about cell memory and helps you release the negative stored energy and emotions in your physical body. We know that our body can store emotions. We also know that our body can store fears and trauma, and we know that cell memory can be stored in our bodies. And what is interesting is that we've actually done studies and found that cell memory, so if two people are having organ transplants and one person is, say, donating a kidney, if that person, maybe their kidney is healthy, but they were a smoker for a couple of years, you know, when they were young, when they transfer that kidney, there, there has shown um, in multiple studies that the person who gets that kidney could start taking on um, cravings for cigarettes or could start wanting to smoke. They could also take on um, certain personality traits or certain cravings for food that the other person who had the kidney and donated it might have had, whether that person is alive or whether they passed away and then donated their organs. So there, it, there can also be cell memory transfer from two humans. So it seems like we're kind of on the right track to say that cell memory could be passed on from a spirit mind 
to a body when it reincarnates onto Earth. Um, but I do know that this sounds woo-woo. Again, I know that there isn't any sort of like way that we can factually and perfectly measure this kind of thing. So take it with a grain of salt. But again, if it's something that can help you, if it's something that can help you heal, if it's something that can deal with a lot of the fears and internal phobias and emotional fears and trust issues that you have, then you might as well give it a shot. I mean, it's it's one more solution along with the solutions you've probably already heard of. So if things that you've tried haven't worked, then honestly, why not? Like, what, what is the point? If you're already in pain, then why not take on one more tool and see if that can help you and relieve that pain? It's just, it just makes sense to at least try. And the final thing that I wanted to mention is that I was, I read the books, I'd done research, I looked a lot into past lives, and I, it sounded good, it made some sense, but it also seemed really far-fetched, um, so I wasn't really sure what to make of it all. What I decided to do is that in the last part of my book, there was a, um, like a, sort of like a hypnosis, um, sequence that you could read out. All you had to do was read exactly the words that were written. It would take someone through their past lives, and my boyfriend and I just wanted to see, you know, if we could experiment what would happen. So I was like, in the worst case scenario, you're just laying down and relaxing on the ground while I read to you, and in the wor best case scenario, you know, you actually get to see a past life. So we tried this, and we actually, um, at first he said, you know, when I asked him how old he was, he said the exact same age, so it seemed like it didn't work, so I went back a step in the hypnosis and just kept reading on, and he, uh, he was able to actually mentally go through all these processes, and then when I finally asked him again, how old are you, he said 17. Obviously he's not 17, and so that was, you know, when I literally had gotten the chills, like I was like, this is crazy, so I started asking him more questions, I started following through the rest of the hypnosis sequence that was written down, and it turns out that he... All he did was he never even knew about past lives, like he wasn't really up on them, he hadn't read the book that I had just read, so he was just laying there and all of a sudden he is waking up in this body as a 17 year old in Italy and he actually lived through an entire battle, he lived through being homeless in Italy, through fishing on rivers near Venice, um, and we were actually able to go back and find pictures of uh, buildings that he was able to confirm. Through those buildings, we were able to find exactly which plaza and which town he would have been from. And we even found the exact war and battle that he remembered, that he remembered fighting through and was literally in his mind on a horse fighting through this battle as I was asking him questions and seeing what he was experiencing. So it was super, super fascinating. And that was kind of the final straw that helped me believe in past lives was actually seeing someone in front of my own uh, eyes actually get this regression and get taken back. So I know there's a bunch of free past life documentaries on YouTube. I'm, I've watched a couple of them. I think I've watched almost all of them actually. So I'll go back and I'll find some of them and link them in the description below. This stuff is honestly super, super interesting. And I really hope this made for an interesting Halloween topic. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to make this a super awesome double feature. So again, thank you so, so much for watching this video. I know it was different, but I hope you enjoyed it. So if you like Supernatural stuff or spiritual stuff, definitely let me know and um, let me hear about it in the comments below if you have any topics you'd like me to request or look into. And other than that, I just want to thank you so much again for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. You can follow me at all these links that I will put right here. I love you all so, so much. Happy healing.